Hello and welcome. Today, I want to share with you a new way of adding information or data to a large language model. Usually, I build RAG or Retriever Augmented Generation apps around large language model, either open source or not open source. And I build two different kind of ways you can build a RAG. But today, Based on a request that I got on the last video of how you can add or fine tune data, a PDF data on a large language model, I thought about it and I find out how we can fine tune almost any model that we want, but it shouldn't be big because I'm using only open source and Google Collab to fine tune Llama 2. Why we should fine tune a pre-trained model? We only fine tune models when we have a static or basically a data doesn't change and we won't put it inside our large language model and fine tune it only on this specific kind of domain. So we're not using when the data is dynamic. This is one we use RAG. So RAG is very good when you are working with database that you fetch data from and you process it through a large language model and it give you an output. But if the data static, there is almost no need to use a RAG. And if the data is a larger than like, I will say a thousand page or 2000 page, I think fine tune is a little bit better. Even it's more costly if you want to make a very good fine tuned model. But how fine tune basically work? We will have a large foundation model like the Lama 2 that I'm using in this video. It's already trained on a general purpose data, so it's not have a specific domain. It got a lot of information from the web, like Wiki or Reddit or Twitter or whatever place. And we take it and we train it on a certain domain. For example, if you're a data scientist and you want to basically answer certain data scientist questions, you will give it a certain data set that you already created or collected. And when it's got asked this question, it will answer you with the data that is trained on. This is basically how fine tune model work. The older way of training a large language model or basically fine tune it is take it and update every single weight inside it, which will take a lot because some of this model are very, very, very big. Microsoft come with this idea, it's called LoRa, which a low ranking adaptation of large language model. So the easiest way to understand LoRa training is that we take the pre-trained already model and we freeze the data inside it. We don't update it. We just add a new data on top of it. It will make it, yes, larger for basically the size on the hard drive, but it will make it perform almost the same on the GPU. It will not get bigger in terms of update and it will be much, much faster in terms of training. It took it a little bit step furthermore and added something called QLoRa. It's an extended version of LoRa, which works on quantizing the precision of the weight parameters. Simply put it, it take the quantizing technique, it's take data and make it smaller, turn it from example, 32 bit format to four bit format. As you can see here, it's a parameter of trained models are stored in 32 bit format, but QLoRa, QLoRa compresses it them to a four bit format. I think you are bored of talking. Let's start coding. The first thing that we need to install Accelerate, it's almost all of this library is hacking phase and open source. So don't worry about something gated around gradient or, or using a platform. You don't have to buy anything here. You just have to have hugging face account and a Google account to access Google Collab. We will need Accelerate Transformers for installing the model. Bevit parameter efficient fine tuning. This is basically adapt large hybrid trained model to various downstream application without fine tune the model itself. We have bits and bytes. Okay, it's a lightweight library for Coda custom function. And TRL lays this library also from Hagen Face. It's a full stack tool to fine tune and line transformer language. We have a different transformer language and diffusion model using method like BDO, BBO, and RM, what we are using today, SFT. What is FT is basically a super fine, supervised fine tuning, which we are watching the model while it's getting trained. So I'm installing this Google Club. 
then I'm importing what I'm going to use inside this model. The first thing that we're going to set up is the model that we are using. I'm, I have access to the Lama 2 7B chat from Hagen Face, which is over here. You can basically download it easily. There is no issues here. It's a shared model for Lama 2. The second thing that I'm using is the data set name. I didn't create a data set or a custom data set for this video. I wanted to show you how data set basically works. So you have like some sort of instruction and some time and an input basically and our output and a text. This is the general way of creating a data set. But for Lama 2, there is certain format for prompt template that basically an optional if you want to make the model training easier and good for basically fine tuning. There is some sort of style, the user prompt, then this kind of in in the model answer. Basically, what will the user put or ask and what is the, the answer will be. And here there is a data set that's in this format. It's it have a different kind of language side, but it is, as you can see here, here compose a professional email with the following points and it asks it what to do. Then it basically create this kind of email for, for it. So it's a, a question, then an answer. So it's, very, it's already trained or pre-trained on what to answer we need to get these questions. This is basically the benefit of fine tuning. I'm using this data set. I got it from Hagen Face also. I'm gonna leave the article also that I'm using for this uh, video. It's a very good article. I want you to read it. It's have explaining for almost everything except the flora and culora, but you already know that. I think I should make a video about how you can create your own data set, but just tell me in a comment if you wanted to do that or you already can do that on your own. Back to our code. After we bought the model name and the data set, we will put the name of the new model that we wanted as a result. I called mine the Lama 2 7B Codewello because this is my channel name, Codewello. And please subscribe. Also, after that, I already explained what is QLORA. QLORA parameters is basically that's it that you need to put the lower R, the attention dimension, the alpha parameters, and the dropout probability for LoRa layers. Here in bits and bytes, we have the parameters also. We need to set the parameter first before we start using it. We have used bit for bytes, true. Here we compute the type of the four byte based on the model, quantizing the type, basically compressing in it, activate nested quantization for four bit based model, set force, here we start about the training argument parameter where we want to put it. The output directory inside a folder will be called result. You can name it whatever what you want. How many a box? Well, this is basically how how many times that model will take a look to our data. It really depends on what you want. If you want to basically have a very good look, basically buzz the number above, but just for the sake of this video. Just one time, you can try it also a low number. If it's not working, push the number a little bit higher. And it also depends on how much VRAM that we have available. But I wanted to do that as, as just purpose to show you in the tutorial. Enable FB16 and BF16, both of them all false. The batch size for both is four. The batch size means that how many the how many pieces of data the model see at one time. This is just for like you, he can see the model can see four pieces of data at one. Here we take to the SFT parameters. The SFT stands for supervised fine tuning. What is the difference between SFT and RLHF? The SFT stands for supervised fine tuning. The model are trained on a data set for instruction and response. You give it equations if Basically, the user asks, what is this? You will answer that answer. There is no regeneration or basically there is nothing that you can go wrong here. But the, the RLHF, reforms reinforcement learning from human feedback, is a bit advanced. The model interacts with the environment itself and receives feedback if the answer is good or bad. It's trained on the maximum reward signal using something called BBO which I will leave the article for. You can read about it all if you want. It's a bit more complex and it's more advanced. Here we start the real stuff for loading the dataset, load the tokenizer and check the GPU. 
data set we already know what data set that we want and we split it into three and we have the tokenizer uh, loaded for qlr conf configuration the bmb configuration is still stand for bits and bytes configuration which we already set above and we check in here on the gpu if it's compatible with the b float we are using the t4 of gpu so basically it's compatible already then we load the base model that we already selected which on top we just setting the stuff that we already put up there the model configuration the auto model casual from Again, phase transformer already have the stuff imported in the above, and we have the tokenizer. We already also imported this stuff above. Load LoRa configuration. We also said this stuff. It will take a little bit of time to download this model. Honestly, it's nine gigabyte the first part, and the other part is three gigabyte and fifteen megabyte. I think so. It's all of it about 13, 13 or fourteen gigabyte. Uh, kind of so it's not that big i mean compare it to mr large or mr uh, 87b it's uh, smaller way smaller and finally we set the training parameters the training parameter is already up there you can put the training parameters over here and finally we can start here over here the training and after the training is done we will save the breed train new model and Basically, new model is a new model name that we wanted. As you can see here, it took about like 25 minutes. For you, it might show about like an hour at first or hour and few minutes, but it will go down with time. Here's the training losses going up and down, up and down. So don't worry about this. It's sometimes I feel like I overstepped. It's like, for example, the lowest step that I got was at 175. Here that this is basically the lowest step I think because 1.173 and here the lowest one is 177 so it's just I'm showing you how you can train it but figure out the steps and you can show this stuff inside tensor board by just basically I committing this code and you can see here a lot of information about the model train like the lows the training lows so finally we will we want after we're done with the model to load it out and ask it what is large language model this is basically the prompt that we have as you can see here this is basically the lazy format for the lemma 2 our pipeline will be our model that we created and tokenizer and max links all the stuff is using hunger face because it's just a simple pipeline and here it's basically what is the large language model a large language model is a type of artificial intelligence model that's trained on a large data set takes to generate human-like human-like language output it's designed to be able to understand and generate text in a way similar to human language it's a very good actually answer i mean like it's almost perfect to be honest and give us an example here some example of large language model is bird finally before we reload the model we want to mpt all the vram that are available for us then we reload the model in fb16 and merge it with the lora weights after that we need to put this model in some place in the last step is basically push it to hagen face or basically put it on hagen face to keep it up there this is basically at the last step of saving this model All right that's it i hope that you learned something new about fine tune on lemma 2 Right now, all you have to do is create your own data set and fine tune the model. It's not that hard, honestly. The first time that you figure out how you can train it, after that, it's super easy. I want to thank you for watching and making this channel cross the 1000 subscriber. I hope that you learned something new. And please subscribe if you are not and hit the notification on the like button. And see you in the next one.